It's getting warm, I've got to tell you. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> but I hear um, <laughs> hot weather is actually better for what's going on. Hey, everybody. This is Leah Mangum, and this is our Take It From The Top episode three cast chat. And I am so excited. We've got such a great group today. Of course, we have Jill Whelan, a regular. Say hi, Jill. Hi, Leah. And we have <laughs> Brian Phelps, which I'm so excited to have today. I'm such a huge fan <laughs> of his in the Mark and Brian show. And just so thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's a and pleasure. We have Lou Beatty Jr., who is on <laughs> my favorite show right now, Million Little Things. And of course, he's done so much more than that. And he'll be tell us about it soon. And we have one of our producers and actress, Angeline Rose, Rose Troy. <laughs> so thank you for coming, everybody. And um, yay. Hi. Yes, yes. Uh, and yes, Jonathan yes. Mangum. I almost forgot my wonderful husband and Jonathan Mangum. Uh -huh. <laughs> Man. I know that's terrible. Academy Award and forget to <laughs> shout me out. It's not going to happen, so he's fine. Um, so anyway, so everybody, I just want to catch up and see what everyone's been doing. I know we've all had a lot of downtime. Uh, Lou, I'll start with you. Well, uh, we've been doing puzzles. Uh, we did one very large 500-piece puzzle. Whoa! Now we, we have a second one that is stumping us daily, but mm -hmm. we go back and forth to the table in between my wife and I. We're, we're about 25% done on that one. We cycle. We have a tandem bicycle. Now it has a flat. Uh, <laughs> but we walk. And I cook meals. Oh, and wow. I make individual meal size portions, which I call imps. And I freeze them. That's wonderful. What's your favorite thing to cook? I cook a lot of stuff. Uh, um, everybody loves my ribs. At least they tell me. Ooh, uh, uh, but, you bake uh, them or put them on the grill? Oh, I have a grill. I have a real grill. I don't do gas. Right. right. I do charcoal. I wish my husband could say the same thing. What? <laughs> right, right. So, you know. And I, hey, I, Carolyn, I, I, we're live. How are this. you? Oh, Carolyn will join us in one minute. So, um, Angeline, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been drinking a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I thought that sentence was going to end. I know. Me oh, <laughs> well, yeah, there, there's some wine going on, too. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I started planning my wedding, so. Did you have big news? That's yeah, wonderful. I got engaged. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Wonderful. But um, yeah, so I'm taking full advantage of Amazon and, uh, you know, <laughs> hanging out at home and doing the thing. <laughs> Are you guys in quarantine together? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. We haven't that's killed great. each other yet, so that's, I guess, good, right? I think great that's time. good. We're going on 20 years and we're doing fine, but we have, we separate sometimes in different rooms, but you know, it works out, right? Yeah, we'll separate the right word. <laughs> are you two still, are you two still sexually active? Oh, so you're, Leah's parents are watching. Oh, my right parents now. are watching. Oh, sorry. Oh my it's okay, it's a healthy marriage, yes. <laughs> Jonathan just made a face. <laughs> oh my goodness, so Jill. I'm so tell calling your parents and I'm gonna tell them how you got those children. <laughs> It's a secret. <laughs> Jill, what have you been doing? Uh, I am still in the attempting to make a starter for sourdough, but I think I've nailed it. Okay. I think I've nailed it. You've been working so on that, that for a week, haven't you? It's I been know, a week. I know. I know. <laughs> what can I tell you? And I'm uh, measuring how far my roots have grown out. Grown out. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, we are on our classic movie tirade. So tonight, I think it's either Harrison's Choices tonight. So we are either going to be watching, um, oh, what was it? Uh, oh, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh -huh. uh, you know, or something else light. That's, <laughs> That's always good. I want to know what Brian is doing. Brian, what? Love to what know is what Brian's doing. Well, I fill my time mainly. I like to go to the airport and lick the handrails on the escalators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I spend a lot of time in the gym. Uh, that's kind of the only uh, way I can be mobile. Mobile, and you know, I know this is a grass is always greener kind of a situation, but um, I not married, uh, no kids, and uh, lost my pet. You know, a few years back, so I am here in this house. It's it's, you know, so. I'm like, God, I'm so envious of you guys. You know, you have, you have family and, and people around. However, 
the house right next door to me, um, there's seven people, mm. parents and kids. And constantly, as the weeks go on, they're at each other's throats. And I'm kind of like, maybe I don't miss that. Maybe, maybe I don't. <laughs> so it is. It's a grass is always greener kind of thing. But um, I've been writing a lot. I've been um, uh, writing uh, uh, scripts, writing books comedy and also um i don't know i just kind of got onto this but I, i've been writing uh uh children's songs for uh advice to give kids advice how to you know kind of deal with whatever's going on in the in their lives that's awesome adorable did, did, you, did you write one called don't go licking things at the airport Is no i didn't <laughs> but I, I just i, I just <laughs> i'm going to though i just finished this one and it's about it's for teenage girls who are kind of you know going into their young adult life when it's a very stressful time, I know. And, um, and I just kind of, I wrote this and I, I really kind of hope it helps them. I just wrote this, so uh, I might get some chords wrong. <laughs> Your boyfriend wants you to go all the way, but you don't know if you're ready. You're all grown up and you have to decide now that you're going steady. Well, here's some advice from us to you. It's what we think you ought to do. <laughs> Let them go all the way. <laughs> Don't be such a crude. <laughs> to be popular, you have to do it. To say no is really rude. Give him what he wants. Let him break your heart. If you don't, then they'll call you frigid. And that's no way to start. <laughs> more you know. I, I just, I just hope that helps. You know. <laughs> yes, yes. I, yeah. Many teenage boys are going to be very happy. You wrote that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, Chase just got a new girlfriend the day before he went into quarantine, and I can't say that I'm not happy about that. <laughs> oh I have a friend whose um, daughter is quarantined at her boyfriend's house. Oh my gosh. 17 years old oh no you know what's going on there well <laughs> i wrote a i wrote a song about that <laughs> <laughs> Carol Hi. carolyn carolyn how are you fine i am sorry i'm sorry 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 that i am late but i have a story yeah oh can't wait to hear your story you tell I I was on with Mother Love. Have you guys ever heard of Mother Love? Like the Mother sure, Love? Sure, sure. Yeah, she's in LA. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was on with Mother Love, and no one told me that it was an hour-long interview. So I was driving down from Santa Barbara today, because that's where I go to get my car serviced. Who doesn't? And I was on the phone with Mother Love, and I couldn't say, okay, Mother Love, I'm in front of my house now, and I have to go in, and the minutes are ticking by. My car is becoming a sauna. And I can't get off the phone with her. And so I, so literally at three o'clock, she said, okay, thank you very much. And I'm like, boom, and I was in the house. So now I'm plastered down and I'm nice and warm and toasty. And I was on the phone an hour with Mother Love talking about wow. shenanigans. So that's why I'm a little late. Sorry, I'm Mother Love. I'm sorry. I think I'm out of the loop. Who is that? She's this phenomenally spiritual, funny, kick-ass um, talk show host who's just all about uh, universality and spirituality and, you know, what are the things that make you, you? It's like, she's like, well, now, wh how, why did you know at the age of four that you were going to be an actor? It's like, oh, I don't know. I just did. Right. <laughs> well, what was it? And it's like, well, I don't know. Right. If I could describe it, I would. So it's like, <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of that. It was a lot uh, of That's great. Like, Anyway, that's what I was. Sorry. What have you been doing? Well, I'm glad you made it, John. Yes. Uh, I've been doing a live um, comedy competition mm -hmm. where um, comedians compete with uh, the audience on Facebook. The comedians come up with a joke based on a picture or a meme, and then the audience types mm -hmm. in their own joke, and we pick the best one from the audience and put it up against the uh, professionals. And the audience wins sometimes. Yeah. It's really fun. Called yeah. jokes. Yeah. On my Facebook page, facebook.com mm -hmm. forward slash the mangum, or on YouTube under you jokes. So if you guys aren't busy, <laughs> um, and uh, Brian, where are you? What room is that? Um, it's um, we call it the game room because when I first moved in here, I had a pool table and some slot machines, and now it's actually my big TV room because it's got the big TV. 
It looks like you're being kept prisoner in the attic of Notre Dame. And they, really? They let you and Quasimodo down every couple hours. Yeah. Thank you, Ari. Thank you. Looks like a hunting lodge. Like, it looks like palm trees. I couldn't tell yeah. what it was. You have the most interesting background, that's for sure. You can my greenhouse. Entire football field in uh, entire football team in that fireplace. Believe Got me, it. from personal experience, I've done it. Got it. So oh, she's you've fun. done so <laughs> much wonderful shows, so many things that we just all love watching. Do you have any fun stories to tell us? I'm sure. And have you worked with Ted before, right? Have you and Ted worked together? I have worked with Ted and and uh, doing our theater. director. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, luckily, he has given me a lot of shows. But a, a fun story. I had to think for a while. Then I said, Oh, when I started. Back in the early 80s, very early 80s, I took my son to an audition uh, for, for, for a theater company, the Attic Theater in Detroit. And uh, the lady walks in and she says, okay, uh, who's here to audition? My son and all the other kids stood up because they were kids fun. Then she said, who sings? My son sat down and I stood up. <laughs> I had never done theater before. I auditioned. I got the uh, understudy role for Love and Al in, in Stud Circles or Working. Oh, and yeah. that was my entree into theater. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Wow, that's so wonderful. And that was really fun because <laughs> I had never done it. And there I was. And uh, I how many years ago was that? 40. Wow. Wow. Gosh, wow. 40. When that's I was younger and better looking. <laughs> I think you're pretty good looking now. And I also think you're incredibly courageous because to just stand there in front of a group of other people and say, I sing when you hadn't mm -hmm. done it. Oh my gosh. I think that Well, was I hadn't sang in theater, but I was a singer. I was a background singer, group singer in the 60s and 70s in Detroit. I was also in the- uh, In Detroit? Fist, yeah, in Detroit. And the Fist Jubilee Singers, I was one of those, which is a very, very prestigious uh, position to be in. Uh, so I was a singer. I just hadn't done uh, theater, and I was taking my kid, and it flipped. Okay. Sing something. A bear stone? On a clear day, rise and look around you, and you'll see who you are. Mm -hmm. On a clear day, how it will astound you, and the glow and the feeling outshine every star. That's me. Thank you. Don't feel part of. Oh, that's Look at this. Awesome. To a musical. So Jill and Brian, I know you guys have worked together. We've known each other forever. Do you want to catch us up on your relationship? I've had some lunches with you guys and it's so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if Jill and I were like, remember like the Dick Van Dyke show in the 60s, they have those parties, the office parties at the house and they all wear suits and they'll dress up and and they'd all like stand in the middle of the living room and, and just do skits and do musicals and do just just make everybody laugh. We would have been that couple. We would we would we we're just a couple of hams, you know, as you as you well know. But um, I've always said it. She's my comedy soulmate. She, she truly is. We just try to make each other laugh all, t all the time. That's and cool. you guys had a, had a show for a while, which was wonderful. A little over here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was so much fun to show. podcast. It was great. And I know there are some of our uh, podcast listeners who are watching this. So, hey, y'all. Yeah. listeners. We yeah. had an amazing time doing it. It was just, it was the first time we actually officially, officially worked together. Yeah. And um, it, I wasn't concerned at all. You know, it was just like, just put us in a room. Well, this, what do you want to talk about? And we'll. <laughs> and go. We'll, for better yeah. or for worse, we yeah. go. Yeah. What was the name of it? When I explain the show Brian and I tell everyone show. the cast. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's oh, okay. sorry. What is it again? Sorry, I didn't mean to talk Brian about it. Brian and Jill show. Yeah. <laughs> and his favorite thing that he used to do was a bit called Will Jill Know It? And it was pretty much any, I don't know, what was it, Brian? Any 70s, 80s? Nine, 70s, 80s, 90s rock or pop song. She knows nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Only Broadway, baby. <laughs> Good. I'm kind of with Good. you. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Do we have any questions from the audience? No, but you haven't. You haven't said. Hey, do you guys have any questions yet? So ask uh, the audience. Oh, you. audience, do you have any questions for our for our guests? Sorry about that. Well, Angela, do you want to tell us a story about how you started? Oh God, uh, I started modeling when I was a year and a half in Tennessee. Uh -huh. um, and uh, just kind of went from there. I started in commercials at five, 
but I was also a competitive ice skater. So there was like this weird thing because I would travel the country ice skating and then like the agents would call me like, you're supposed to be here. You know, you've got this audition. Like, oh, I'm on the ice. You know, so (laughs) there was there was a lot going on when I was a kid. Um, And then we moved uh, up to Jersey and I worked in New York as a Ford model um, for years. And uh, then I just sort of became a little disillusioned with the modeling industry and fell more in love with, you know, off Broadway. I worked at Helen Hayes and um, just love the whole live audience and get to be, you know, kind of bigger than life and affect people. And it was, it was fun. So I continued into a theater and film and TV and now I'm here. (laughs) Oh, yay. We're so happy to have you. I want to ask Carolyn a question in a minute, but let's see if our audience has... Uh, Jim Sears wants to know, is anyone wearing pants? Ah, uh, I know I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing my Nike shorts right now. Uh, question. Scott Seidel, love the podcast, but then you stop. Why? Oh, Ryan. Uh, uh, just, I, I just need a little time off. The time that it's actually six years in the running now, so that, that's a lot of time off. So I'll but just I, answer hashtag too soon in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for Carolyn. Carolyn, how are they going to continue? I know you do General Hospital and other soap operas. How are they going to continue? How are they going to move forward now? Apparently, we are going to pick up where we left off, but I think it's going to be mid-May. Yeah, we were supposed to be back yesterday. And obviously that went out the window. So we're coming back. I think it's May 24th, roughly. Wow. The same day that the, the, same day that the daytime Emmy nominations, I think, are being announced. Which you've um, been nominated before and you've won, correct? Yes. 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 Um, yay. 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 And so, so, so those two things, I think, are going to happen simultaneously. We go back. And I think we're just picking up from what I understand, right where we went, right where we left off. So do you have episodes right now, new episodes still airing or have yes. they stopped? So you still have enough episodes uh, to get you to when you- I think, I think if, if the new episodes have stopped airing, they just stopped airing. Cause I think we were, we were about four weeks ahead. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. I can't wait for you guys to continue. And I'm happy there, that it's that soon. That's incredible. There's one soap that I think was filming the Halloween episodes when they stopped so oh, they, gosh. They're, they're golden <laughs> wow they're golden yeah. That's yeah. Um, i don't know if everybody knows this yet because they haven't seen it but lou his uh episode is next week yes yeah so everybody has to know that lou plays our dad and everybody gets to meet you next week as well right and oh, wonderful. It, it's oh you are he's so good you guys are in for such really a really good Okay. Uh, well, between he and Carol. Next time we'll have him sing. Little did I know. I know. We know that on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, do you have a fun story? Uh, there's a joke I have about Willie Nelson. <laughs> no, we're not going to tell that joke right now. But thank you. <laughs> uh, fun story about um about doing the uh, just any fun story in your a clean one. Uh, nice. Oh, a clean one. <laughs> um, well, you know, let's make a deal. We do all the time. It's um, it's. It's always fun when the people um, curse really loud because they don't they don't realize they're on TV and they'll be like, "Do you want?" The... They think they're in their living room. Yeah, is that they're it? like, "Like, do you want the curtain or the car?" And they go, "Oh God, I'll take the." And then they'll just the effing curtain. Right. Say. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> we have to go back and reshoot them picking the curtain. So that's always fun. that happens a lot. Yeah. Do you have any more questions for us? Uh, let me see. He's wearing his readers. That's why I'm having him ask the questions. Well, well you are looking for questions. I want to, um, I want to do a duet. I think, I think that, uh, the hubby and I should be, uh, like we should, we should sing to each other. Oh my Love God. Okay. I just started singing again. And, and I'm not and, oh, in, 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 in the new bar. Yes. 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 We, yeah, bar. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, back, or you guys having an act that we didn't yeah, know we'll, about? We'll sing like Peter, Paul and Mary songs. Really Ooh, good. Right. Yes. I love it. And it will get a little too spicy for your children to see. Jill, do you know who they are? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one last question and then I'll let everyone go. Thank you so much. There's not any questions, but nope. people that are saying hi, uh, Kara Mars, uh, <laughs> Ed Milner says hi, Ed. hi Ed. John Hatch, Carolyn Crum, Sean Cunningham, Carolyn. Kelly James. Kelly James owes me money. 
Wonderful. Well, thank you so but much, everyone. Say, before we go, I actually have a really funny story about the yes, episode that's what we I was just got. Yes. Oh, please. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. So this episode is where you get like your first glimpse of my character, which is Victoria. And we shot right off of Skid Row. So in LA, Skid Row is, I mean, it's 10 after 10. It's a very huge homeless population that live there. Um, we had no problems. Everything was great except this one guy. So we're shooting on one side of the street and you can see me walking by in that, that dress and, you know, yeah, dress looking up to happy. here. <laughs> and um, Brian, you know, he's looking at me and makes a comment. This guy across the street, I guess, didn't realize we were filming. I mean, there was a camera and sound equipment and people all around. He starts propositioning me from across the street, ruining <laughs> takes, yelling to the other side, how much, how much, hey baby? And we're like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, do you really think I'm a hooker? So, I mean, that was, that was fun. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And I have to thank Brian. When we were on the set, he's like, I have a joke. We're like, do it. And so he was throwing in jokes here and there, which was so wonderful and so appreciated. And Carolyn as well. Carolyn wrote herself an entire monologue, which I don't think we've gotten to yet, which was brilliant. <laughs> Can I We're keep going? We're like, don't stop. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember when I first got to the set, you know, um, the first thing that entered my mind was, you know, downtown LA and not a very nice part of downtown LA was just a really odd choice to shoot a, a World War II submarine movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we have to get creative. Movie magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, well, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Thank you everyone for watching. And we have a new episode coming out next Tuesday at 3 p.m. episode four. So you'll see everybody. Thanks Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.